Well, Rand Paul has come out and said arming Syrian rebels would empower ISIS. Video, Ebola patient escapes quarantine, spreads panic in Liberia. That's up on Infowars.com. Obama admits ISIS beheading videos help White House agenda. Establishment media attacking ISIS will turn Syria into a failed state. And, of course, the media does not recognize that this was the plan all along. U.S. State Department orders 160,000 Ebola hazmat suits. That, my friends, is the big news and is linked up on DrudgeReport.com along with this headline, CDC says prepare for Ebola in U.S. hospitals. It's now officially saying that. Meanwhile, the British Prime Minister is heading to Scotland to boost no vote. Look at this headline. Robot sentry shoots targets automatically from two miles away. They're already making the ground, air, and sea robots autonomous, making their own decisions, completing the Skynet equation. Robot sentries that automatically shoots with a 50 caliber rifle people at two miles away. Samsung Group subsidiary has developed it. It's called the SGR A1. And this particular robot will carry a fair amount of weapons that ought to make you think twice about crossing the borders of South Korea illegally. And it has been tested out of a demilitarized zone along the border with its neighbor, North Korea. This SGR A1 will be able to detect intruders with the help of machine vision cameras alongside a combination of heat and motion centers sensors. Isn't that just precious? <laughs> it looks like something directly out of RoboCop. Oh, boy. And, of course, it will uh, follow orders, ladies and gentlemen, to go after the people. The whole idea of the Samsung SGRA1 is to let the military robot center do the work of its human counterparts over a demilitarized zone with south and north border so there will be minimal loss of life on the South Korean side just in case things turn sour. Oh, yeah, because North Korea hasn't promised to train 100,000 pieces of artillery on Seoul and burn it in a matter of hours, as it's estimated. No, this is giving control of human weapon systems to the machines and to the technocracy that runs it so they can launch attacks or, or false flags. This is just a disaster waiting to happen, and it's all unfolding. I got a lot of other news I'm going to be getting to, but let's race through your calls. Kelly in Texas, thanks for holding her on the air. Uh, God bless you, brother. God bless you. Uh, uh, he does. I have fun. You're talking about all this Ebola and stuff. I mean, you just showed all about these uh, machine guns. There's your FEMA guards right there they're going to come to. But at any rate, with all these uh, viruses and stuff, I lost my wife to Lou Gehrig's disease uh, a year ago on Memorial Day. I'm sad She's to hear 53 that. 53 years old. Uh, thank you. And uh, uh, she was in the federal system for a little bit. But I think, I mean, I have to go back and look. And I think she got a flu shot. I've never had one, won't get one. I don't take anything like that at all period as a matter of fact now i take uh, your uh, survival shield x2 and vitality and all that because of all this but and i'm fixing to go have a surgery done it wins on my shoulder and i'm scared to go back in there because i don't know what's going to happen out of that but i got to get it done so i can work but my, my point is all these viruses we're in a post antibiotic era now we have nothing to touch it well my wife was i took care of her here in my home until she passed away i took off of work to do it and I'd do it again in a heartbeat because I wouldn't put her in a home. But the times that she had to go to the hospital, uh, she uh, uh, got a infection of one of the superbugs, so-called superbugs they, get, they got, in her urine. They said, well, there's no antibiotics that will touch it. I just think that our government is evil. They're pulling out all stops. They're using several different fronts, uh, being uh, taken down the borders, being a uh, uh, these biological warfare that they're putting out on the public, which is what I think it is. And I don't think that they're stopping yet. They're trying to keep us confused so they can have so many different fronts you just can't focus on one. 
That's my opinion. That's right. And they put estrogen mimickers in the printer ink, in the food lining, to make women hyper-feminine that gives them thyroid problem, breast problems, you name it, and to make men feminine so there's no real men. Normal men, when they're being enslaved, take action. But they have lowered the testosterone on record by at least 50% in the average man living in an industrialized nation. I don't care if you're black, white, or Hispanic. Your, your testosterone has been artificially lowered by these people. I mean, they know exactly what they're doing. And lo and behold, Bertrand Russell wrote about lowering testosterone in the 1930s with additives in food and water. And lo and behold, in 1974, the year I was born, the current White House science czar wrote EcoScience. That, by the way, they've taken off Scrib online. They don't want you reading now. It was free online because it was a government textbook on their plan to sterilize the population through the food and water. They are doing it. God bless you, brother. Good to hear from you. Sorry about your wife. Barbara in Arizona, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Hey. Yeah, I want, I'm calling about the, um, you know, uh, about carriers of disease like typhoid Mary. Yes. Yes. Uh, I have personal experience with that. Uh, it's with a, a dog and a cat, but, I mean, you know, it's the same thing. Uh, there was a dog of the stemper carrier that gave my puppy the stemper, and then afterwards the people told me, oh, yeah, my dog's a you know, carrier of December, but it, it was, it, you know, they lived long lives. But then I had a cat in 81 that lived for 20 years that was a carrier of feline leukemia, and she never saw a symptom or anything, but it was verified by the vet that she, you know, was a carrier. I had to keep her away from everything and keep her in the house. You know, no That's right. My, my parents had, like, three cats when I was growing up, and then they found out that one of them was a carrier uh, of the uh, cat AIDS or whatever it is that humans can't get, but it's HIV, and that it wasn't killing that cat, but, the, but that it was viral and would kill other cats. So they didn't get more cats after that until that cat had died uh, because there's so many. Uh, I haven't worked for a vet in years, but what is it? There's, 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 there's kitty AIDS, and then there's kitty uh, leukemia, like you said, that's transferable. And see, there's a lot of stuff in humans like this too that they won't tell you is viral. Like, they know a lot of type 1 diabetes that, that, you know, that they claim is genetic is really, uh, and this isn't me because I'm not a medical doctor. I've been told this by medical doctors on air. I've seen it. I've been told by people at the Dell Medical Center here in Austin. Uh, I've talked to folks that have been involved uh, that they're getting pancreatitis from a virus. And they're telling them, well, it's genetic now when they know full well it's a virus that's done it and that their pancreas might turn back on. But once they put them on the insulin, it's not going to turn back on. Do you see what I'm saying? Right, yes. Most cancer is viral. That, that's that been known since the 20s. Right. Go ahead. And I was just going to, you know, so that's why, you know, people, yeah, they could be carrying a bowl all around, and, you know, and they show no symptoms of live a long life, just like typhoid and Mary. And the other thing I want to say is um, I'm a member of, uh, you know, Prison Planet. Thank and you. I share it with my family and friends, and I just want to thank you so much for, for my being able to do that, to share it. Thank Ma you. Thank you so much. I'm going to say this again. I am overall a very good person compared to everybody I know. I'm probably one of the nicest, most moral people I, I know. But I still have really bad thoughts. And, and I'm a wicked person. We all are. So when you tell me thank you and how great I am, it is such a responsibility to be here on air. It is so humbling to be here on air and to have so many people counting on me while I stammer and stutter and, you know, do all my little ticks and things that I do. That, that that's why I want to tell you, you don't need to thank me. We're all in this together. We, we love justice and truth so much that we even hate our own worldliness, even though it's not that big compared to people we would call bad. But when you really meet somebody who is awake and does know what's going on, they are always very humble. It's because you're then aware of your own shortcomings and other people. And it's not that it hurts me when you say thank you and things. It's that you're counting on me so much that then I feel like I'm not working enough, I'm not doing a good enough job. You see what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I understand, yes, but, um, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know how to describe it. It's a feeling. But listen, God bless you. I appreciate your call. I mean, I'd liken it to a video we never aired of Australia. I think it was Australia where a train ran over a guy's leg and it was stuck on top of his leg. And... One person got over there and started pushing on the train and nothing happened. 
but then pretty soon everybody gets on the big train and they lean the whole train up so they can get his leg out from under it. Now, if government would have tried to do that, he'd have died of shock. It had taken a day to get a crane in there and get it off his leg. But the people took action together and they knew how to push the train, how to get it off his leg, and then how to set it back down. But it'd be like if I was pushing on the train and you were thanking me for pushing on the train. Listen, if I'm not pushing on the train, you need to be punching me in the nose figuratively. It's not exceptional to push on the train or to pick the car up off the kid. And in the fact that we think it's exceptional, and, and by the way, when I see a police officer helping a lady change her tire, I want to pull over and thank them. I want to write a letter of commendation, you know, to the police chief saying I saw him doing something good. And then it clicks. That's what cops used to do most of the time. When they weren't on a call, not because they were little pathetic servants, but because they were real men and knew that was the highest order was going out and helping children and women and things like that. It was chivalry. So then I think, no, I don't need to thank that cop, but I need to point out that there are good people like that out there so that that becomes the example of what it is to be manly and good. But it's not something extra wonderful. It's the bare minimum level that we should expect or we become self-centered, arrogant blobs, myself included, entitled. I said it earlier, I am, a, I can't help it. When I go out and like eat some expensive seafood dinner and I think about all the starving children around the world, I feel guilty. And I know it's good to go eat a nice seafood dinner and pay the waiter a nice tip and, and have a restaurant. But I see how the fake left controls well-meaning people that any type of wealth is bad because they take people who have empathy and, and, and who feel guilty when they're doing better than others, and they manipulate us into turning over our lives to the state to have our money spent where they would. So I want to do an analogy soon or a, or a parallel video or maybe even really do it for real if a restaurant would let me where I want to go in and sit down with hidden cameras at a table at a nice restaurant and say, mind if I have half your iced tea and half your steak? They're going to say, get out of here, you're crazy. And I'm going to say, well, I'm the government around these corporations that want government welfare, it's the equivalent of coming and sitting down at your dinner table. See, where is their guilt? I feel guilty if I've got a new Ford F-150 pickup truck. I mean, I bought it two years ago, but I consider it to be new. Meanwhile, I see people who are government bureaucrats I know stole the money driving brand new Mercedes, and they're all glitter bugs getting off on people looking at them in their fancy vehicle. And I'm not saying a fancy vehicle is bad in and of itself. I'd love to drive some 700 horsepower sports car, but not because I want to be looked at, because I want to drive a fast car. And again, I'm kind of waxing philosophical and I'm not even giving answers here. I'm just talking about what goes on in my mind because I have a conscience, I have guilt. I have guilt about things I shouldn't even have guilt about because I intellectually know the right thing but there's that internal dialogue where I'm trying to be a good person, trying to really be honorable, trying to not just say I'm a good person, but I'm trying to really be one. There's that compared to these sociopaths and psychos who are running around everywhere who just think because it's for them and what they want, why then it's fine and you can go die in a ditch. <laughs>Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Group. Today I'd like to talk about the war on women. You've experienced and heard about the benefits of super male vitality. Now, the new formula has arrived. Introducing the new super female vitality. I have specifically designed this formula to help the body naturally regulate itself without the use of artificial hormones. Key ingredients chosen from the highest quality sources. Each of these ingredients works synergistically with the female body in order to maximize overall vitality. You've heard the reviews and the feedback on how the original super male vitality has revitalized relationships. Now, both the man and the woman can have the revitalization in their own bodies with super male vitality and super female vitality. Secure your super female vitality today from our limited stock at InfoWarsLife.com.